Hey everyone, welcome to part two of the independent distributor model. Today, I'm gonna to explain to you how to manage your independent distributor model in QuickBooks. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to put in invoices, how to put in distributor invoices, how to put in distributor credits, how to tie in the three so that you can either pay the distributor a commission or get paid on the open balance for the invoice. Let's get right into it. Okay, so let's take a look at the following example. Let's say that the distributor picked up 100 quantity of code 101. Code 101 is a test product that we have set up in our QuickBooks. Since they've picked up 100 of code 101, remember in our previous example, we discussed that you have to invoice the distributor for that quantity that he picked up. So now what you want to do is go to the distributor here in your QuickBooks. So go to your customer, customer center. Make sure that you have a customer set up for the independent. Okay. In this case, I've got Juan Perez, independent distributor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to create an invoice. So let's go here. Let's do 100 of code 101. Okay. When I'm done, I'm going to save and close. And you'll see as the invoice is saved here in the QuickBooks. So now this distributor has $283 worth of open invoice on his account. Now let's say that the distributor goes out and invoices one of your customers and he sells five of code 101 to this customer. Okay, what you wanna do is you wanna make an invoice for the customer that the distributor serviced. Here we go, here's customer number four, which is a test customer that we'll be using. We're gonna right click, create invoices. Now we're gonna invoice five of code 101. You see right here, here's the invoice total. We're gonna save and close. And now we have an open balance for customer number four. So again, the distributor picked up 100 of this item and sold five of this item. Now, what's very important is, since he sold five of this item, you don't have to credit the distributor's account for the same amount. To do so, we're gonna go ahead and go back to my independence account. Now we're gonna right click and create a credit memo that's gonna match the invoice for customer number four. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go 101. Remember we did five. And then we're gonna save and close. Okay, now you're gonna have an invoice and a credit memo on this independence account. What you wanna do is you wanna apply this credit memo to this invoice. Why do you wanna do that? Well, you wanna do that because every time you apply a credit memo to the invoice, it's gonna decrease the balance of what the distributor owes you. Remember that this independent distributor is servicing your customers and you're gonna receive a check in the mail from your customer at some point in the future. So what you wanna do is decrease this balance. To do so, we're gonna double click on the invoice. And then right up here, you're gonna see a button that says apply credits. So we're gonna go ahead and apply this credit. We'll check mark here. And then we're gonna hit done. And when we're done, we'll save and close. So if you look at the account balance, the account balance is now $269.32. Okay. Every single invoice that Juan invoices a customer for, we're gonna take an equal credit and apply it to his account and apply it to his account to kill this balance for the product that he picked up. Now at the end of the week, you're gonna have a balance on this, on this invoice. That balance you have to charge Juan for because normally that balance has to do with waste. That balance may have to do with theft. That balance may have to do with some kind of shrinkage of some sort. So it's very critical that you charge the independent at the end of X period, whether it be a week, a month, the open balances on their account. Because all the open balances are product that you gave them that they then were not able to service the customer for. 
or they swapped out the product or they did something that they should not have been doing. Either way, you should not be stuck holding the ball on product that the distributor basically was negligent towards. Okay, so that's how you do an independent distributor model using a distributor invoice and then crediting the distributor's account for any customer that they service. So remember in this example, we service customer number four. Here it is, okay? So now what we wanna do is, let's assume that the distributor also did a credit for this customer. So we're gonna go right click and we're gonna make a credit for this customer. So let's say for instance that the customer had some product that was being returned to the distributor. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna again, let's say it's one of item 101. We're gonna save and close. Okay, now remember, you're left holding the bag for this credit memo. So you have to go back to the distributor's account and you have to invoice his account for this credit. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to Juan, my independent distributor. We're gonna right click. We're gonna invoice the distributor. Okay, so now you'll see that the independent distributor's balance increased. Why? Because again, he's done a credit for a customer, for a product that he delivered to the customer that he thought was a good idea to turn into that customer. So now you have to invoice the distributor because they've now picked up that product and it's back on their truck. Whether that product is going to the trash or it's returning to their inventory, that's irrelevant. You have to charge the distributor for the product that they pick up. Now, remember, there's a lot of particularities in a business model like this. For instance, a lot of my customers here in the invoice, in the memo, they put this is a distributor invoice or a bulk invoice. Okay. Then on the credits and on the invoices, they put the reference number for the actual invoice it went against. So for instance, let's say that the invoice number that this credit is associated, or that this invoice is associated to is one, two, three, four, five. Well, you wanna make sure that you put the equal number up here. Actually, that's a bad example. Let's go here to the credit memo. And let's say that this is this credit memo is for invoice one, two, three, four, five. What you want to do is you want to put the invoice number right up here. Okay. That way you can always tie a credit to its invoice in the event that the driver or distributor has any questions as to why they owe you money. Okay. That's how you set up an independent model in your QuickBooks. Now you have to maintain this by hand but it'll allow you to keep your receivables with your independent up to date and accurate so that they can't steal from you, rob you, or take advantage of you. This is very important. Now, remember, there's a lot of other little variations and twists, but hopefully this helped you get your independent model set up in your QuickBooks. If you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to us here at Lace Up Solutions. We'll be more than happy to help. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.